Hi, I'm L. O'Brien, a data scientist at iterative.ai, and I'm going to be talking about reimagining DevOps for machine learning. So first, a little about me. Um, for most of the last decade, I've worked in academic research, mostly in neuroscience. And uh, one of the greatest joys of my academic career is getting to use really big computers. And so when I got my PhD last November from the University of Washington, I was interested in how scientists and academia and industry use computers and how we're going to build tools that enable high quality science as our methods and our data sets and our problems all seem to be getting more complex. So I joined iterative.ai recently as a data scientist and our flagship project is open source software called Data Version Control or DVC for short. DVC is a tool that adapts version control systems that software engineers are familiar with to machine learning projects. So as an organization, we live at the intersection of data science and DevOps, and that's why I wanna share some of the big ideas on our minds right now. So let's start with a figure from a really strong case study that I love of teams all across Microsoft. It's from 2019. And the authors reported that teams, whether they worked on speech or search or ads, all tended to follow a pretty similar workflow on software projects involving machine learning. Now, of course, there's a whole bunch of folks with different skill sets working on this. We've got data engineers who are collecting, cleaning, and labeling data. Data scientists are engineering features and then training and evaluating models. And software engineers are deploying and monitoring applications that are built around those models. And this is, for the record, an organization staffed entirely by baby animals. I just think that's what the world needs. Anyway, all this is fine if the project proceeds linearly passing off from data engineer to scientist to engineer like a relay race. But that is rarely what happens. So we know that machine learning models rely on feedback. And that means that software engineers and data scientists might have to pass several modeling experiments back and forth. And data scientists need to be able to anticipate the system constraints of software engineers who are going to deploy their models. And everybody needs to know exactly where the data came from. And all this back and forth gets very confusing very quickly. And it's reasonable, you know, because machine learning is a new part of software engineering workflows, and it isn't always easy to incorporate. But software engineering isn't new as a discipline, and we can learn a lot from the field's evolution. Specifically, DevOps has had some success bringing together developers and operations specialists, and so that's reason to hope that engineers and data scientists can find ways to work together too. Now, one of the big ideas from DevOps, which has really changed the way that multidisciplinary teams run, is continuous integration and continuous delivery, which I'll abbreviate CICD. And CICD is a practice that establishes collaboration rules between developers and operation specialists. So let's take a look at what that means. Um, the big idea is that when you make a change in source code, a build happens automatically, and then some tests get run on that build. And if the build passes tests, then the modified source code becomes a candidate to be merged back into the main branch of a project. Um, and if you fail, then you'll iterate again. And the idea is that every action, like a git commit, triggers feedback. And every round of feedback produces a release candidate. So let's look at what's different when machine learning becomes part of the workflow. So now it doesn't just matter if you change your uh, source code. Also, changing your training data set is going to have big ramifications for your results. So you've got to track changes in the data set. Now, instead of building software in the traditional sense, we're training models. And training models often have specialized hardware requirements like GPUs. Now, on our train model, we're not just you know, running unit tests or more traditional forms of software testing. Um, we're evaluating a model, and sometimes it's ambiguous whether or not a model has gotten better. So if we look at a bunch of metrics you know, after um, our model is trained, it might have improved on accuracy, but at the expense of making more false positives. And if that's acceptable or not, it often requires some domain knowledge from someone like a data scientist. So, as you can see, it's not really trivial to just insert machine learning into an existing CI-CD system. And there's a few reasons for this. One is that version control uh, can't always track changes in data sets. A lot of data sets are simply too large to be tracked by traditional version control systems. Um, and training models is not like building software. The hardware requirements can be really particular. 
finally, evaluating metrics is more complicated than looking at you know, a list of tests and seeing if we've passed or failed. So what's going to be needed is that we'll have to build tools that extend CI CD practices from the discipline of software engineering to machine learning. And this is something that we're thinking about a lot as we continue to develop DVC. So I'm gonna make a wish list of some of the features that we might want if CI CD is going to work for ML. And it's not exhaustive, but you know, these are kind of our top priorities. Uh, we wanna be able to version data like code. We want our CI system to be able to allocate whatever hardware may be needed to train models. And we want metrics about model performance to be reported in a human readable format so that data scientists and other team members can efficiently review them, kind of the same way you might review a PR. So obviously we're not content with just a wish list, and we have been building some of these priorities into DVC. So first, DVC extends Git version control to datasets. And that means that you can track data set changes in addition to source code changes in your CI CD system. Next, uh, if you configure your CI system to spin up some cloud compute instances, uh, which some of our users are doing, um, DVC helps you move big files like data sets and models back and forth between machines. So there's less need to write custom scripts for moving around those artifacts. Uh, and third, as for metrics, DVC provides a link between metric reports and versioned data sets, code, and models, so that over the course of many iterations of this cycle, you don't lose track of the metric because of that corresponds to your experiment because metrics have an immutable link to the exact version of the source code in the data set that is connected to them. And an ongoing area of research is how to display these metric reports in a way that data scientists can use in a CI CD workflow. So to be clear, there are many solutions out there and plenty of companies have built their own internal custom platforms for machine learning experimentation. And lots of teams are still doing some of these things manually. You know, you just, you put something together that's gonna work for your team. Um, now, our goal is not to create a whole new platform that organizations would have to learn um, or transition to. We're interested in tools that augment existing workflows. You know, our priority is really making data science and DevOps more closely tied in the CI-CD process. And CI-CD systems, we think, really make sense for a lot of machine learning projects. They're a way of bringing together training data, source code, modeling experiments, and more all in one place. So it gives everyone on the team access to all versions of the project, including its history and any ongoing experiments. And it provides a standardized format for storing and sharing any kind of file that's related to the project. It's not just a technological shift, it's also a cultural shift that could be as important for full stack machine learning teams as DevOps has been for software. So thank you for listening and remember that we are an open source project. So we really hope you'll join us in building the next generation of DevOps tools for machine learning.